Hello, this is Professor BRB. In our first working lesson of Illustrator Creative Cloud, uh, we will be learning to use the object tools to put some basic shapes on our page. And we'll be learning how to make those tools uh, do exactly what we want uh, by modifying their behavior with various keyboard combinations. Um, you can download this template file from the link that's on the YouTube page. Uh, let's take a look at how it's set up. Um, we have several layers in this file, and um, these layers, uh, demo template and guides, will all be locked, and you should work in the My Work layer, and that will um, make our lives a lot easier. Uh, this file has a number of artboards here, which is kind of Adobe Illustrator's term for pages. And in the artboards menu here, you can navigate between the artboards and get a preview of some of the things that we'll be drawing. And you can return to the one we're using, which is object one. You can also navigate between the artboards down here at the bottom of your screen and uh, choose whichever one you want. We're going to work with the first one, object tools. Uh, if you uh, have been working, go ahead and reset your Essentials workspace so that we'll all kind of be on the same page here. And the first thing that we're going to do is look at our object tools. And uh, over here in your tool panel, it's the fifth one down, it'll say the rectangle tool. You can also get that by just hitting M on your keyboard. And if you mouse down on the rectangle tool, you can see a lot of different tools appear. And if we just mouse out to the edge till that little bar goes dark, then we can tear these off and have them up here. And that's kind of a convenient thing to be able to do. Uh, so let's just start with a rectangle tool. And this is the very simplest way to get a shape on uh, the Illustrator page. Uh, we're going to go to our tool page here and change and make sure that we're in the default of a black stroke and a white fill and just clicking this little default stroke and fill button or hitting D on your keyboard uh, will get you there. And we're just going to go to this set of magenta crosshairs and draw a rectangle. And absolutely nothing could be easier. Um, when we go to the direct selection tool, which you can get to just by hitting A on your keyboard, and then if we click off uh, just to a blank area, we can kind of see what Illustrator's done for us. It's created four anchor points. And if you grab one of those with the direct selection tool, you can see that you can actually drag them around and edit your shape. I'm going to do Command Z, Z, Z to take us back to where we were. So this is how vector drawing works. It works with anchor points and paths that run between the anchor points. And we'll be learning a lot, bit, a lot more about that as we go. I'm going to go down to my zoom tool here, which I can get to by just typing Z on my keyboard. And I'm going to zoom in on this area so we can see it a bit better. Next, we're going to be using the rounded rectangle tool, which automatically puts a rounded corner on our rectangle. So let's select that. Start once again at the crosshairs and pull down. Uh, if your defaults are a little different than mine, you can hit the uh, up the down arrow key to reduce that radius or the up arrow key to increase it. It doesn't have to match mine exactly, but there you go. And once again, if we go to our direct selection tool and click off, we can kind of see what Illustrator has done for us here. It has created actually two anchor points uh, for each corner, and those anchor points have handles. And those handles can be used to adjust that curve uh, any way that we want it to. Um, and they can also be, the anchor points can be moved. Um, and so these shapes are completely editable. I'm just doing Command Z to take me back to where I was. Um, going to our third shape here, we're going to choose the ellipse tool. And the way the ellipse tool works is that um, it starts from the upper left-hand corner by default. So if you go to your crosshairs and just start pulling, 
you should be able to draw an ellipse to pretty much match the one on the template. Once again, going to our direct selection tool to see what Illustrator's done for us. If we click on one of the anchor points, you'll see that control handles appear. Now, when we drew our rectangle, there were no control handles which is why for the rectangle, all we could really do was move those anchor points around. But if you have a curve point, which has handles, you can do all kinds of other things. And if you kind of pull and push these around, don't worry about ruining your shape. You can always do Command-Z to take you uh, back. Uh, or you can always draw another one. It's so simple to do. And just kind of fool around and see what, see what Illustrator is doing for you. And I think you'll very quickly be quite comfortable with um, just these simple shapes here. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is learn to use our keyboard to modify the way that these tools work. And these are called constraints. We are going to constrain the way that these uh, tools work by using the keyboard. And if we go once again to our Rectangle tool, which the keyboard shortcut for that is M. Go over here to our crosshairs, and this time hold down your shift key and draw, and you will see that the rectangle tool is constrained to drawing a perfect square. And this square is absolutely mathematically perfect. And because I have smart guides turned on, you can see it actually gives me a little readout here about the width and the height. And I'll, I'll show you how to turn smart guides on and off in just a moment. Um, but whatever, without having to do any calculations, uh, Illustrator just makes a perfect square for you. And uh, if you want to turn smart guides on and off, um, just go uh, to the view menu. And you can have smart guides either checked or unchecked. I'm leaving it on for the moment. Um, you can work with it on or off, depending on your preference. So uh, let's go to the rounded rectangle tool here. Start once again at our crosshairs and hold down the shift key, and you can see it does exactly the same thing. It constrains it to a perfect square, although the square now has rounded rectangles. Likewise, for the um, ellipse tool, hold down the option key. And we're constrained to a perfect circle. So this is really, really handy to be able to make perfect shapes uh, with so little effort. Uh, and the computer does all the calculations for us, which is great for me because I'm really not a um, I'm really not a whiz at doing calculations. So now um, that we've got that mastered. Uh, we're going to go to the ellipse tool again. And this time we're going to make the tool draw from the center out instead of from the corner down. And this is very easy to do. You just place your cursor in the center and hold down the option key and pull out. And now the ellipse tool draws from the center. Same thing works. For this rectangle and the rounded rectangle tool, you can see those draw from the center. That looks great. And as you might guess, going back to the rectangle tool here, if you hold down the shift and the option keys together, it combines the effects. So we can draw a perfect square out from the center. We're going to our ellipse tool, a perfect circle. And this is handy if you want to, for example, make concentric circles, kind of like a target or something. So we have uh, two other shape tools here that make slightly more complex shapes. This is the polygon tool. And it automatically draws from the center, so you don't have to hold down the option key to make it do that. Um, and you can kind of rotate it around, or if you want to level uh, your shape, you just hold down the shift key, and that constrains it to level. 
Uh, you can also modify the way the polygon tool works by the using the arrow key on your keyboard. If while you keep your mouse button depressed, you hit the down arrow key, every hit down will reduce a side on the polygon and every hit up will increase it. So you can take it right down to a triangle, which is kind of the minimum. And uh, if you hold down the shift key again, it levels the triangle. And the star tool works exactly the same way. It automatically draws out from the center. And if you hold down the shift key, it levels it. So that's pretty easy. And if while you're drawing, while your mouse button is depressed, you hit the up arrow keys, it will add a point of the star. For every tap. So that's kind of fun too. You can kind of play around with this and really just make it any way that you want. So that's kind of cool. Uh, just one little last note before we finish here a new feature in Adobe uh, Creative Cloud uh, is that if you take a shape which has uh, corners and select it with the direct selection tool. You get all these interesting little, I'm going to zoom in on this here, go to the direct selection tool. You get all these interesting little target shapes. And these are a really great feature that Illustrator users uh, had been asking for for many years. And if you just grab that little target shape and drag it in, you can round the corners of your shape. And it's really very uh, interesting how you can uh, use this in your artwork. Uh, I'm just going to try it up here on my triangle. Again, go to your direct selection tool. And one thing that's kind of interesting is I don't have to select all of the anchor points in this shape. Right now, I just selected the bottom two anchor points. And you can tell because they're solid. So that means they're selected. And this one is still hollow. So it's not. And if I just grab these and pull them in, notice that it has lowered um, the radius. It's uh, made a round radius on the bottom and left the top pointy, which is really pretty cool. So um, there's a lot that you can do with this. And I encourage you to spend some time playing around with it. Um, in our next lesson, we're going to use some of these skills to draw a balloon. And we'll also be learning to use the pencil tool and to configure gradient fills. So I hope you'll join us for that one.